Hi, I'm Jenny from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. And today we are going to play Name That Herb. Welcome to another round of Name That Herb. Here's how it works for you newcomers out there. I am going to give you a set of clues, and when you think you've got it figured out, feel free to leave your guess in the comments section. Today's herb is very well known and beloved by herbalists. And chances are, if you've been dabbling in herbal medicine for any amount of time, you have this guy on your shelf. And chances are even better that you have it growing voluntarily all over your property. So I have got my work cut out for me as far as um, clues. You are getting nothing but curveballs today. Let's get started. Clue one, traditional medicine. So this plant has been on the traditional medicine scene for ages. I mean, there are Egyptian hieroglyphics from 5,000 years ago that mention the medicinal uses of this plant. So it is an oldie but a goodie. It has also been used in ancient Greek, ancient Roman, Middle Eastern medicine, European folk medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, and Ayurvedic medicine, just to name a few. And in fact, it would take me less time to mention the systems of medicine that it was not involved in. So there you go. I just thought I'd narrow it down for you. I try to be helpful. Clue two, habitat. Uh, no one really knows for sure where this herb originated because it's everywhere and there are ancient records of its uses from every single continent, but some think that it started out in the Mediterranean region, perhaps Western Asia, something Southern, Southern Europe. Uh, nobody really knows. It's happy to grow everywhere. It wants to be friends with everybody. Clue three, medicinal properties. Today's mystery herb is as multi-talented as it is prolific. It's a great anti-inflammatory, really powerful antioxidant, antimicrobial, and it accelerates the healing of wounds. And this particular combo of medicinal properties makes this herb fantastic for the entire digestive tract. A mouthwash tea made from this herb can be used to address gingivitis, periodontal disease, mouth sores or infections. It's also a mild cholagogue, which means that it stimulates flow and um, production of bile, and that can really help with indigestion. And it's cholagogue, um, activities and along with its anti-inflammatory properties uh, really make it a wonderful addition to formulas that are designed to address gallbladder and liver issues. This herb accelerates the healing of wounds and ulcers throughout the entire digestive tract. It's a mild antibiotic and it can be helpful in managing microbial imbalances in the gut. And like I said, it is an antiviral um, it's more effective against some viruses than others. Um, it's very helpful for shingles, measles, and chicken pox. And not only is it medicinal, the entire plant is edible and delicious and commonly used in soups, stews, and breads. Clue four, history and folklore. Um, early Christians called this herb Mary's gold, and they believed that a constant association with it would ward off evil. The French used to call this herb Glochefer. Glochefer. Literally, excuse my French. Uh, <laughs> which means left hand iron, because they thought that the bright little blossoms looked like the shiny polished shields that warriors wore on their left arms. In India, this flower has sacred meaning and it represents surrender to God. And it has been used since ancient times to adorn homes and sacrificial offerings and idols. Ancient Mexicans, on the other hand, believed that this plant symbolized death. And they thought that it grew wherever the native people's blood was spilt by conquering Spaniards. In German folklore, the weather was predicted according to how open the flower blossoms were at particular times of the day. And lots of ancient cultures associated the flower of this herb with the sun, 
which may have been too big of a clue because it sort of hints at what the blossom looks like. You have one more clue, bonus. This herb is widely used in cosmetics as a natural dye and for its skin healing properties. It's also used to dye fabrics and cheeses. It is time to guess. Leave your guess in the comments section. Calendula. Calendula officinalis. Calendula is sometimes called pot marigold, common marigold, holly gold, marybud. Uh, the flower is the medicine. Um, though I will say that um, a lot of people use calendula petals. Uh, the center of the flower is where most of the medicine is, so bear that in mind when you're making medicine with this. Um, calendula is in the daisy family, so it's related to a lot of our other herbal friends like yarrow and echinacea. So see, I told you you had this one on your shelf. If you don't, you might be a little bit silly because this one does absolutely everything. Um, it's known for its skin healing properties primarily. Uh, you would be hard pressed to find any herbal skin supplement anywhere that doesn't have calendula as its first ingredient. Um, it's wonderful for eruptive skin diseases and any sort of skin injuries, cuts, scrapes, burns, uh, it stops bleeding. It also works well on bruises, strained muscles, and um, it can be really effective in slow healing sores. Uh, for example, foot ulcers in type 2 diabetics, it really accelerates the healing of those. Sometimes those are really hard to kick. It is an antifungal. It is not my first grab for antifungals, um, but it is effective against certain funguses, um, candida being one of them. So it can be used to address thrush and yeast infections. Um, and calendula's antibiotic and lymphatic properties make it really, really handy for draining swollen lymph nodes. One of my favorite things about calendula is it's a wonderful herb of friends for children. If you're ever wondering how to get your kids really, really excited about herbal medicine, calendula is the perfect place to start. Everything about this plant is incredibly appealing to them. You know, it has these cute little seeds that look like claws. They're very easy to grow. Kids can take pride in planting them in pots on your window seal or tend their own little, own little patch outside and they don't need much supervision to be successful in that. Um, they have those bright, beautiful, sunshiny flowers. And um, they are really fun to observe and interact with. You can teach your kids to watch to watch them because they have some really fun behaviors um, that have to do with the sun. They open at the same time every day and they close at the same time every evening and the little blossoms sort of follow the progression of the sun as it moves across the sky. So that's fascinating to kids. Uh, medicinally, it's a real superhero and most importantly, it doesn't taste bad. Um, kids are so picky about herbal flavors, but calendula is one that they will probably take without complaining. Um, I know I'll always be grateful for calendula because it was the very first herb that my boy fell in love with when he was little. And he is 14 now, and he is very, very passionate about herbal medicine still. And he has a special attachment to calendula still. <laughs> And that wraps up today's episode. If you are interested in learning more about calendula, we have a fabulous long monograph in our school. Join the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. Um, we also have a really one wonderful module on the skin. And we discuss all of the other herbs that are really, really, really great for skin issues. And we, you know, Calendula is a star in that module as well. So it gets a lot of attention in our school. Um, and if you're interested, you know, we also teach uh, how to grow it, how to harvest it, how to make medicine, and all of the special uses for it. It's really, really a mind boggling plant. Uh, don't forget to uh, like this video and subscribe. That really, really helps us out. And leave me a comment. I would love to know if you were able to guess before the big reveal. Let me know which clue kind of clued you in. And uh, again, I am Jenny from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. Thanks for listening.